I am pretty sure Luke is not commenting on Mary and Joseph's poor parenting skills. So we have to ask ourselves, gee, well, what is this about? Now, we are always mindful that this is not about history. It's not about a newspaper report, that it's about theology, okay? He's saying something. Now, whenever we hear Luke's gospel, boy, I'm getting tired of this. We just did this, didn't we? It was like last week. No, it was three days. Okay, folks, I've decided next year we're doing Christmas on the fourth Sunday of December. I don't care what day it is. <laughs> and this, is this is insanity, okay? Anyway, so, all right. Well, we're in Luke's gospel, and the, there's three-act play. They're from St. Mary, Mother of Jesus. They don't teach them this there. So it's a three-act. That's where I was baptized. See? Something good came out of St. Mary, Mother of Jesus. Okay, so, so it's like a three-act play. The first act of the play is like Old Testament times with Old Testament characters, sort of like Saturday at 4 o'clock mass here. Anyway, so the whole time we got Zechariah and Elizabeth and Simeon and Anna because basically St. Luke wants to say Jesus is connected to salvation history of the Hebrew scriptures. The second act of the play after the baptism of Jesus, it's the life and time of Jesus. The third act of the play, Acts of the Apostles. Luke wrote that too. They don't know this. Luke, Acts of the Apostles. And that's the life of the church. It's the third act of the play. Okay, great. So we're in the first act. Now we just heard, God, it seems like a week ago. It was only yesterday. But anyway, we just heard how Mary and Joseph went on their journey to Bethlehem. They, took, they heard God's word. They carried it. And they brought forth the Savior of the world. And we heard the angels say, Glory to God in the highest, peace to his people on earth. We heard peace, shalom. He came to bring glad tidings, which makes us think of the mission of Jesus, which is to bring glad tidings to the poor, liberty to captives, to set the oppressed free, sight to the blind, and a year of favor by the Lord. Okay, so we got all that. Okay, so now here we go. We pick up with the story, and we hear that Mary and Joseph are once again on a journey. You see, whenever we hear Luke's gospel, we always think on the road again. Because the whole thing, that's not a Bob Hope movie, no. On the road again, because we're always on a journey. So, they're on the journey again, okay? Now, it's kind of odd the way we use scripture and we take, it's like if you go to a movie and you take like just the beginning section and say, oh, well, you, sometimes you have to know the end of the story to make the first part of the story make any sense. But anyway, we do what we do. So, we hear that they're on the road to where? Where are they going? Jerusalem. Boy, Lucy was paying attention. They're going to Jerusalem. Very important. James. You gotta straighten out your friend. Anyway, James, James. Okay, so they're on the road to Jerusalem. Now, we are mindful that Luke's gospel, Jesus is always on the road to Jerusalem, okay? Because what happens in Jerusalem? Pas Sierra, say that loud. Paschal mystery. She's a graduate of our school. <laughs> Paschal mystery, very good. You knew that, right? You want to get confirmed? You knew Paschal Mystery? You know that? No, not at all. Okay, Paschal Mystery. We get a clue about the Paschal Mystery because what are they going to Jerusalem for? The Passover. Passover has the Paschal Lamb. And then we know in Jerusalem, Jesus goes there because that's where the Paschal Mystery, which is the, I got to see somebody I know, suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Very good. And so this is actually story is connected to the Paschal Mystery. Okay, so they go, oh, Palma is here. Good. Okay, so they go because it's the, they go to Passover. They do the Passover thing and then they're done and they, and they do what they're supposed to do and then they go back and they think Jesus is with them, okay? But he's not. Now, we know Eleanor never lost any of her kids, but they only had one, okay? But we want you to get that sense. What does it feel like to lose your child? Oh, my gosh, okay? So, first of all, they go look for him amongst two. The relatives, right? You're never going to find Jesus with the relatives, trust me. They all go to church, but they don't know Jesus. Trust me. You're not going to find Jesus with the relatives, right? Especially in Brooklyn. Mm, forget about it. Anyway, they all wear the gonya and the horn. They all wear that. Oh, they, don't, they, don't know, they don't know Jesus. Trust me. They think they know Jesus. You know, they'll get the crown back at Regina Pachas, but, you know, Jesus, forget it. Okay, so they can't find Jesus with the relatives. Very rarely can you, especially in my family. We're Italian. But anyway, so they proceed to, to go to Jerusalem then, and they look for him for how long? Good, even Weston got that. Three days. Gee, what does that remind you of? Oh, 
thank God we have somebody who knows something. Three days in the tomb. Very good. See, it's a connection. This is not history. It's not a newspaper report. That's not how you write history or newspaper reports. But three days. And so three days is very symbolic because God always brings forth salvation in three days. Remember Jonah in the whale? Okay, so three days, and after three days, God brings forth salvation. And so now we have the same thing going on, that he was lost for three days. It's very symbolic. You know, I, I, know, I know Wayne over here is like, hey, wait a minute, Good Friday, 24 hours, Holy Saturday. That's like two days at most. How's this? Three? It's symbol, symbol, okay? Three days symbol. Okay, so we got the three days going down. God brings forth some good things in three days. So they go and they find Jesus in the temple. And they say, Jesus, how, where, what are you doing here? You know, and, and Jesus is a good Jew. He always answers a question with a question. You know, how are you? How should I be? You know, what are you doing in the temple? Where should I be? So, you know, Jesus is where he would be. He's in the temple. It's kind of like that Geico commercial. I love the Geico commercials, you know? Do you have the one with Peter Pan? No? Okay, well, Peter Pan is like flying around and it's like a Peter Pan reunion. And he sees Joanne and he says, Joanne, you don't look a day over 70. And Peter Pan's still 12. And he says, well, that's what Peter Pan does. He does an A. Then they have another one where this guy, he's like a spy. And he's like shooting down helicopters. You see this one? You gotta watch HLN. Anyway, <laughs> so, so he's shooting down the spies and the helicopters are coming and his phone rings and he answers his phone and it's his mother Costa. And, and she's like oh we have squirrels in the attic and your dad says and then she hears all this helicopters going she says are you at a zumba class because that's what mothers do they call us at the wrong time always that's what mothers do okay well this is what jesus does okay he's in the house of god lord i am not worthy that you come under my roof okay under my roof house of god roof connection okay so they, they get this all together, and then Mary ponders this in her heart. Now, we have to remember that Mary and Joseph are metaphors for what it means to be a Christian. And even being wonderful Christians, sometimes we think Jesus is traveling with us, and he's not. And it's happening a lot these days. My goal is not to put Christ into Christmas. I'm trying to put Christ back into Christian. It's a concept, okay? But the reason why I want to put Christ back into Christian is because there are people who think they're traveling and Jesus is with them. But they're full of hate. They're full of anger. They're full of resentment. They want to kill their enemy. They, oh my God, they just seethe with, with, with rage. And, but I'm a good Christian, I'll kill you. Okay? Well, you know, they think Jesus is traveling with them, but they lost Jesus a long time ago. And so I think today's gospel, obviously there are many levels of understanding, you think? I mean, we could talk about, you know, Jesus becoming 12 and taking on adulthood and making an adult decision. That's the power of scripture. There's many, many, many layers of meaning and symbolism. So it may something completely different to you. But I think what I want to emphasize today is that sometimes we think we journey with Jesus and we lost him, you know, especially in Brooklyn. They all are journeying with Jesus, but Lord knows they haven't got a clue. But, you know, perhaps every Sunday we are reminded that we journey with Jesus and we get full of fire and we're going to be great and God is with us and we're going to be filled with love. And we're going to love our enemy. We're going to do good to those who hate us. We're going to love and accept. We're going to be conduits of love. And by Friday, enough aye, already. Aye, aye. aye. <laughs> oh. And we're like over it by Friday because it's been a lot of work loving Jesus all week long and traveling with Jesus. It's rough. But, you know, we, in our lives, we sometimes think Jesus is with us, but we've lost track of him. And so we need to connect once again to him. And what better place to connect with him than in God's house? Now we hear that Mary reflects on these things in her heart. And we know that in Luke's gospel, prayer, not only on the road again, journey, but prayer is another one of his major themes. And we're constantly trying to teach people here how to pray. Because 
We grew up in, you know, you're surprised Mary and Joseph didn't call him St. Anthony. St. Anthony, St. Anthony, Jesus is lost and can't be found, whatever. But no, you know, okay? So, so prayer is not always about asking God to do stuff. Okay? Last night we had a girls basketball team from a Catholic high school in Philadelphia and I was trying to explain to them, they said, what are you talking about, Father? We're praying the opponent loses. And I said, well, they're praying that you lose. And I guess it cancels each other out. <laughs> but, but, you know, we were always like praying to tell God what to do. And, you know, and if I got a lot of people pray for me, I'm in good shape. But poor James, he doesn't have that many people. He's out of luck. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of people pray for me, but you, sorry, too bad, so sad. So anyway, but you know, that's not what prayer is about. But rather, Luke gives this wonderful example of what a Christian does and how a Christian prays. For she ponders these things in her heart. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's what it means to pray. When Jesus went to the desert for 40 days, symbolic number. When he went to the desert for 40 days, he didn't say, Hail Marys and our fathers and glory bees, but rather he connected to God. And so in today's gospel, we are certainly reminded that although sometimes we think we're journeying with Christ, we have lost him. And if we lose Christ, we need to feel as upset and anxious as if we were to lose our very own child. Could you imagine what that would feel like? And yet that's what it's like when we lose track of Christ in our lives. Today, St. Luke says, he can always be found. We find him in God's house, and we reflect on him in prayer.